Hello everybody, it's Chloe. Oh, it's been a busy couple of weeks here, or week and a half. We've had relatives over and that has of course disrupted everything from homeschool to doing videos and everything else. So yesterday, um, July 3rd, we all went to uh, Ocean Shores or yeah, there was this cool store uh, with a shark mouth to walk into and we went in there and got a bunch of fun stuff but um yeah I, I also got a bit of sun and that usually makes me very lethargic and I kind of swell a little bit but although it's hard to tell with me being kind of a fluffy uh, plump lady so I got to stay home and my youngest was also feeling really tired after all the activities we've been doing the past few days and so we stayed home today we did take a little time oh my girl's yelling you're okay kitty kitty you're good. Um, she's an old cat, so she <laughs> yowls for no reason. Um, so first we went to Petco and we got some treats for the gerbils and hamsters and kitties and everybody. And right next door was Barnes and Noble. And today they had some books, a book and a deck. I was so excited to pick up. Normally I would pick up decks from my friend Lee but she's all the way in Utah and I wasn't sure about her variety right now and I figured that I'll order from her when I have like a specialty deck that I'm not sure how it will come and so what she usually does is she kind of checks and makes sure everything's in good order and there's no missing cards or anything like that and then um, if there is she'll handle it for me and then send it on to me so I have everything that I'm supposed to have in the deck uh, and that works out really well because then I don't have to deal with anything wrong with the deck. Um, so yeah, so Lucy Cavendish's book that I know came out in the UK, um, I guess last, before December, or last December, something like that, let me see. I barely got this book. I have not seen it in any bookstores yet, it, pub it published in 2016. I don't know when, but last year. But I believe I saw Miss Flowers, something, Fla Jessica Flowers, uh, one of our lovely YouTuber friends had done a impressions and share of this book uh, and I really liked what she had to say and I had to say and I've loved Lucy Cavendish for years and years now I have her mermaid magic and her um, fairy magic and I'm missing her witches magic book but I'd love to get that one too so when I saw when I had seen some of what she said about the book and what she shared I love this old print um, and sketching kind of older look I love that I love that it has the little ribbon bookmark uh, attached and available for the book love that uh, and when I flip through here I haven't read it yet so just first impressions it is a hardcover book and it has stuff about Merlin and it talks about um, druids a little bit through part of it and then it also talks about witches, of course, and some different things, shape-shifting, um, a few different things. And they have these cool older um, f photos and drawing. This is Elizabeth uh, in the book. And I love that look, too. It's, like, nice to see the blend. So I'm really looking forward to getting this book. I have an educator card because I'm a homeschooler, so I got, like, a 20% off discount on the book and the deck surprisingly um i don't tend to get the membership because i already get like 20 percent off through the educator cards and i'm going to be opening this for you today when i read the book and i get some when i get through the book i'll do a better um impressions but i must say that i love the build and i love the texture and the parchment and that it's a hardbound book and it's actually kind of small um I was going to try to show, here's my phone, it's a, uh, Ad a Galaxy Advent, it's not very big, it's not a very huge book, um, but it is page wise, um, almost 180 pages, so that's, that's nice. And I really look forward to reading it. It's called Supernatural Series, Book One, Witches and Wizards, Real Life Stories Behind Occult's Greatest Legends by Lucy Cavendish. So this is my read for this month. And now for the point of the video, the not that that isn't awesome, because it is, 
But um, one of my, the artists I love, uh, who I was introduced to from Lucy Cavendish, um, is the artist for Be Beautiful Creatures Tarot, and that is Jasmine Beckett Griffith. But the creator and the person behind the theme of this tarot deck is J.R. Rivera. And he is wonderful. He's multilingual. He really understands tarot. And he, um, I got to see an interview with him before this came out and available to the public. So this is one of those cool flap boxes. So let me open it up and let's get going. This is supposed to have gilding on the cards. It um, is, there's been changes to this. I'm not sure if this is supposed to be an exact second edition of um, the Beautiful Creatures Tarot because I know there was a another one of these before. Um, I believe there has been some changed cards in this one. Um, and I've only got to see samples of the first one. I never owned the first deck. Something about how the backs of the cards and the design of that first deck didn't appeal to me as much, as much as I love Jasmine Becker Griffith's artwork. And um, I thought it was kind of a cool system. Oh, wait a minute, I have to correct myself. I think my friend has a copy of this book and she let me see it. Oh, this is really cool. So the bo it's a box with a little tag and I feel a pull. So I think there's some um, magnets on the corners or something. Oh, this is gorgeous. Isn't that lovely? So here's J.R. Rivera, handsome young man. And here is Jasmine Becca Griffith, also known as Strangeling. I believe that was her nickname from teenagehood or something, and also the part of the title of her website. Yeah. Strangeling. Yeah, that's how she's known. And... Oh, look at this nice chunky book. Love it. Mm. Sometimes I love the scent. Oh, it's color. It's t color photos. Oh, I love all the purple. Oh, cool. I just want to check. Yep. All the titles are in green with a cool font. That is so neat. Oh, I better do this a little bit in order. Oh, I love fan I love curly fonts. So pretty. Oh. Gorgeous. Acknowledgements. Oh, you know what? This book is going to be just as much fun and and vividly beautiful to walk through as the deck, I feel. Um, in loving dedication and loving memory to of a grandmother and godfather and an uncle, Martin Tavar. Cool. Oh, there's so much cut and and then Oreo, oh, my beloved pet and fa animal familiar who knew that a dainty, beautiful creature like yourself could fill my world with joy and enthusiasm, fly and roam through doggy heaven, my little, little baby, baby Oreo. Aw, so touching. I love and miss all of you deeply. Your memory and essence and spirit lives through this project and within my heart until we are reunited, rejoice again. Oh, so touching. So... Yeah, so the first one came out in 2014, and the second one, 2017, awesome, and yeah, it has a lot of stuff about Schiffer Publishing, so Schiffer is the one who published this one, as you can see from the little Schiffer and title there, um, I was going to see... I just love the green lettering, um, some quotes from John Keats, Albert Einstein, and Victor Hugo. That's in reverse order, by the way. I read it from bottom to top. Acknowledgements. She's got some awesome stuff here. Okay, so contents. Pretty nicely laid out. Um, a forward by Barbara Moore. An introduction. Uh, about this deck, how to use this deck, spreads. Oh, cool. Lots of them, including an astrology game. Neat. How many spreads is that? Two, three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13. So 15 spreads and a, an astrology game. That's kind of cool. Then it goes through major, 
Arcana, of course, then Minor, in the order of Wands, Cups, Swords, Pentacles, and then a separate um, section for Court cards, and then bonus cards and a conclusion. So that's the contents. And it looks like all the different sections are topped with that green curly font that I think is so pretty and purple accented little boxes here and there. The spreads are done. Oh, I got to see this real quick. Oh, I was expecting a different backing. Fascinating. This is, oh, I, I've got to take a break on this real quick. We'll come back to that. So the spreads, oh, these backs are not what I was expecting, but it's, oh my God. Oh my God. I'm, I don't even know where to go first. Okay. So the deck is so large, it's split into two sections in the box, which that's happened before, if I remember. Um, but, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Look at that vivid purple gilding. Oh my gosh. That is so gorgeous. Oh, I don't even know where to go. I thought these were going to have purple backs. Maybe I didn't understand or didn't pay enough attention, but this purple gilding, I don't even know if it'll show up well enough, but it is so vivid and lovely. Oh my gosh, very metallic-y. Can you see it at all? Can I get it in there? I'm hoping that's showing up really well because at least some, oh, it's so pretty. Oh, that's so vivid. Again, I'm not sure if these are gonna show up very well in the video, but it is so cool. All right, I'll also do this in lighting in my house, but there's the backs. I actually really like that. It's like, there's like little naughty angel wings. Like it's dark angel wings and a Renaissance kind of ball gown dress type look. Oh, I love the curling ribbons of purple. And then it is reversible because it's kind of a mirror image and they are the same. So that is gorgeous. All right, and the reason I paused to show you that is because Oh, that's so gorgeous. Oh, I gotta stop repeating myself for y'all. <laughs> okay, so when you get to the spread section, the spreads are all shown with the backing of the cards up, not the card, like no, no face cards, no reading side up, okay? And then, oh, it's cool. You got purple um, headlines, you know, section, and also dividing up the different parts of the spread and then in green actually and then in purple you have the different placements in the cards and what they are for okay and then they have the cards numbered in I want to say green but it's like really pale color that shows up well behind that dark background and those are all like that okay um the title is green paragraphs black and the positions are in purple and what they mean is in purple with numbers on the cards and they're showing them all through with the back of the cards so that's a nice consistency there you'll know what section you're going through wow okay here's astrology house spread fun and then the other one's past life i'm just gonna flick it real quick because like you really need to buy the book <laughs> uh or i should say the set so here's the astrology game section and it has like a chart which is cool uh, the dates are the first section the signs the name and then the element oh it's only one page okay yeah it's pretty well done okay and then it goes into the major arcana and so forth I don't want to show you all the pictures through the book this way but oh it's such nice vivid colors then minor, and let's see. Okay, so wands was first, like I mentioned before, then cups, and so forth. And they're doing the same thing. I will show you this, okay? So titled in the green swirly font, everything else seems to be in black or bold black uh, for, for the little title areas, and then just regular 
uh, black font for the rest. Okay. All right. I thought these were going to have full purple backs and maybe they changed their mind, but it does have this gorgeous, gorgeous gilding. It's a deep yet bright metallic purple. So fun. All right. And here is the fronts of the cards. There you go. The Fool says Exploration. Oh, cool. So it has the regular titles in a neat little partial font. Zero, the the is in the font, and then Fool. And then underneath in, I guess, a light purple or a lavender, it says Exploration. Yeah, that's really pretty. Okay, and then we have the magician. Wow, lovely. Magician says the inner skills. This is gonna be fun, I can tell. I think I'm going to turn these. Hold on one second, I wanted to be able to, there we go. All right, next we have the high priestess with some sigils, sigils possibly. Uh, again, these are first impressions. I haven't read the book. So inner wisdom, the high priestess with some, let me see if I can get this to focus better. Sigils. Lovely. The empress, creativity. All right. This is a matte finish. I actually really like that. Glossy is lovely, but I like matte because it's not as slippery. Oh, I just realized I didn't even say anything about that before. Yeah, this is a matte finish, and then you have like the gilding on the edge, so it's kind of a neat texture. So the Empress and Creativity. Oh, I love the kitty on her lap, so gorgeous. So pretty. Okay, here is the Emperor. Ooh, sovereignty. Oh, and now I remember why I was hesitant about buying this deck. I think, and we'll find out as we go, I believe this is mostly females, which is fine. The Hierophant and Morals. It's really pretty. The Lover's Ultimatum. Wow. Wow, there is a lot going on there. <laughs> Very cool. All right. The Chariot, number seven, in motion. Haha. <laughs> Sometimes I totally love the eyes and sometimes they seem kind of creepy to me, but I don't mind that because I like the challenging emotions that I feel from her artwork. The number eight, the strength card, and it says fortitude. I like that there's a tiger instead of the traditional lion. And I feel like there's a bit of a, yeah, a Hindu aspect to the card. Multiple arms, the little, um, I forget what that's called and I don't want to say it wrong, but the little gem on the forehead. Really awesome. Sandals. Neat little symbols in the dress too. It's probably hard to see it with my camera and I am sorry about that. The Hermit. Introspection. Come on you. There we go. Yeah, that's pretty, isn't she? Okay. Mittens, what are you doing, pretty girl? Huh? Sorry, I have a cat wanting a pet. Pretty girl. All right. The wheel. Come on, focus in, baby. There we go. 
I may put the cards up so they don't have to keep focusing. I believe, yes, this is the picture, number 10, the wheel, that is on the cover of the box. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's also on the cover of the book. Really cool. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and hold up these cards so that the camera stays focused on the images. Okay, so this is justice and it says equality. Come on, focus in. There we go. We'll keep this focused on the cards then. Hold on one moment, let me get this separated. We're sticking just a tiny little bit. Oh, or maybe more. The mat's awesome, except it doesn't slide apart, right? Okay, so this was Justice and Equality. Oh, it's showing like the good witch, bad witch. Um, I think from Wizard of Oz, you know, the green-skinned witch. I l I'm going to really enjoy reading the book to find out how close I am to what they were trying to do. There you go, the hanging one. So Perception. Oh, I like the cards flying there. Sweet. Let's see what we got going next. Okay. We have the transformation, transition. Ooh. It's quite deep. Oh, I like how many different kinds of skulls, like bird skull, human skulls. Looks like there's like an alligator or some kind of reptilian skull there. Really cool. I like that. Transition. Number 13, so that's transformation. I'm assuming that may be the replacement for the death card. Number 14 is the temperance, moderation. Oh yeah. <laughs> Let's get a drink here. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, I do like the colors. And some of these are sticking a little. All right, these cards are a little thicker. Habitat, the habit, or no wait, the habit. Wow, ooh, dependency. Number 15, I really like that. Oof. Oh, goodness. I'm going to have to make sure I take these apart really well. Sorry I'm going so slow. Again, I am a little bit full of lethargic today, so hopefully you just enjoy a nice share. Decadence. Absorb. Oh, abruption. Hopefully I said that right. If not, please correct me. Feel free in the comments. Abruption. Oh, I have this thing about eyeballs. I don't like it when they're single and staring out. Um, but I actually don't mind that one so much. It's just not my favorite thing, having a random eyeball somewhere. <laughs> oh, this one's pretty. The star. Very bright and cheerful. In its way, it's called Hope. I can definitely feel that from this card. Okay, here we go. Again, these are matte, so, and this is the first time I'm handling them, so they're a little... You want to take your time taking these apart. Make sure nothing's sticking. So far, nothing's really sticking. They're just not sliding apart very fast, which you usually get with like really glossy decks, but this is matte with the gilded finish. So just take your time taking the cards apart and giving them a little flex or something. Um, otherwise, I think they'll be fine. I actually like matte decks. I don't, I don't mind breaking decks in. I don't even mind if they get little imperfections and stuff. It's when they become so roughed up that you can tell the, what the next card is coming up that it starts to bother me. Oh, I love the colors. Okay, the moon, number 18, concealment. Come on, zoom in. Gesture zoom, baby. There we go. Oh, gorgeous. Really love the colors. That's one of the things I love about the her art is the deep, rich, vivid colors she puts in it. I mean, the whole large face, big eyes thing, that's cute and all, but I really love the vivid colors that she uses in her decks. Come on, 
focusing on the card. There you go. Good, good camera. This is the sun clarity. Again, another Hindu inspired piece, I think. The specialized, um, I forget what those, they're not a guitar, but they're, they're a string instrument. I can't remember what they are. A citron, I can't remember. Love those though. Clarity. Come on. There you go. That's much better. Yeah, I was going to try my little tablet camera because it tends to, to focus better, but my laptop has a better battery, so here we go. Judgment, the judgment opportunity. This one has a little bit of a Polynesian or Native American feel to it, or maybe a Hawaiian feel to it. I don't know. Yeah, just really cool. Come on focus in there we go judgment opportunity there we go and 21 is the world and completion and then that's all the major arcana now I'm just going to show you a few in the minors um, if you guys want a full walkthrough and all that I'm I'm happy to do that but with I don't like it when the camera keeps fading in and out and I'd like to kind of try this on my other camera but um, so here's the ace of wands and it says energy so come on focus in there we go much better ace of wands energy so it has like spirits around them I think and I really do feel that Halloween feel I'm not sure if that's what they're going for, but I'm definitely feeling that. Okay. So, I need to separate these a little bit. There's, again, they're sticking just a little, and I think that's mostly, you know, you just get it, and sometimes when there's gilding, they want to stick a bit. So you want to be careful taking that kind of deck apart. These cards are a little stiffer, I will tell you that. So this has a little bit of an oracle um, feel to it in the sense that it has like keywords below the uh, tarot titles, okay? So two of wands, dis decisions, and they're carrying it through through the minor arcana and not just in the major. All right, so let's see. Oh, wow. I really like this five of wands. <laughs> Look. So creepy but still really cool revelry or revelry revelry five of wands I like I kind of like that <laughs> reminds me a little bit of the shapeshifter deck which is a transformation deck and it's one of my favorite deck one of my favorite decks oh butterfly fairy some goldfish okay um here is i i've just got to show this this is a very unusual looking cat an unusual physical cat as well it's the eight of wands a message let me see if i can get this to really yeah there you go there's the details neat looking cat right very unusual it's like it's a spell or something a little familiar again it's going to be fascinating to read about the pictures and the meanings and all that fun stuff yeah I do believe that is a cat so it's adorable animals in general are adorable to me I renamed one of our ferrets fluffy cuddle bums because I got tired of oh okay well alrighty it's probably not going to be a favorite well, if you are, I'm assuming this is a Christian bent card. Um, reminds me of the cloth with Jesus face, that kind of stuff. It says something about stamina. I probably would not have picked this deck if I'd known that was in there. But there are, I read for all kinds of people of all different kinds of face, so maybe that will sh connect with someone. And here's the Ten of Wands. Hardship. There you go. Come on, there you go. 
There you go. All right, again, I will skip some and show others. So here's the Ace of Cups. I love this vivid lavender slash brighter purples mixed in here. The fun swirl design. Fondness. And let's see. <laughs> Three of Cups has some boars, white boars. It's gonna it says celebration. So that's kind of neat. Oh, this is cool. The Five of Cups says regret and definitely can see some emotion going on in the face and if those are ravens or whatever are kind of like that ever more regretful kind of poem I like it and this one's a cool card the six of cups has memories There's some cool seahorses that usually hide very well kind of neat. So these are butterfly seahorses. I always like when they do some kind of contradicting. Um, yeah, here's another set. Um, it's interesting. Some of the stuff I got ongoing here. So here's some butterfly fishes. <laughs> Quest. All right. And this is getting really long, so let's just see what we can... There doesn't seem to be a change of color in the different suits. You just get an acknowledgement in the titles of the change of suit. And um, it's done in really nice bold letters, as you can tell, and then they have the keywords, but it's done in a softer color and print. So you could totally ignore them if you wanted to. This was the Nine of Cups and its satisfaction. Oh, there we go. There you go. That's much better. All right. And again, I'm going to skip a few of these. There's the Ace of Swords or the One of Swords. And I think that was Intellect. Oh, this is one with the multiple eyes on the wings and in the boar head or whatever creature that is. Come on. Focus. Okay, it's a little out of focus. Sorry about that, folks. Um, this is kind of interesting. The Two of Swords with the light and dark blending together. Come on. Focus up. There we go. There you go. Nice and bring that in. Okay. Okay, Three of Swords I will show you just because this is that heartbreak card in a lot of decks. And she does, in this one she has like a nail pinned into the heart. It says disappointment. I can see that. Come on. There we go. Get in those details. So yeah, no color cording to let you know the shift in in um, suits, but they're nicely, brightly labeled, boldly labeled, um, and the keywords are done in that like dark slash lighter lavender, um, which makes it so that if you totally don't want to read it, you if you're just scanning quickly, you won't take it in much. Um, so that's nice, and and for those moments when you have a blank. <laughs> in meanings that's nice as well right oh this five of swords is quite i've never seen a cat look quite so uh ready to attack <laughs> quite uh, hissy or like just yeah but i think that's pretty good for five of swords let's see seven of swords oh that's pretty Come on, bring it in. There we go. Like I said, it's really pretty. It says treachery. 
Huh. Now, if I rem if I recognize the flowers in this, these are actually a poisonous type flower that catches bugs or some other kind of creature in it. Uh, draws it in with a really sweet smell or some particular type of smell and catches them. So that's kind of cool for that card. There's some dinosaurs some more. My sons will love this. It's got a triceratops in there, imprisonment. That part's not so positive, but these, these are swords. Swords are not necessarily the most positive cards in the deck when it comes to tarot. I like this anxiety. I don't know that the picture totally conveys anxiety, but I like that use of the word for the Nine of Swords. Concerned about how things are moving forward. Now to me, the Ten of Swords is like one of the true kind of real death cards, the real end card, if not death. And I think this is pretty cool for a Ten of Swords. All the skulls, come on. There we go. The butterflies are even appropriate to me because they have such short lifespans. And I know in some mes meanings it's like eternal life and things like that. But to me, butterflies die <laughs> constantly. Um, they're beautiful. They're they're the most del some of the most delicate creatures in the world. Okay, Ace of Pentacles, abundance. Let's see. And I'm not going to show every card. So here's an interesting look for the Four of Pentacles. It says greed at the bottom in the word. But the card itself, definitely going to want to read their take on this to see where how that all blends together. Not really sure, but it's pretty. Here's poverty. This would be the five of pentacles. We would normally see some people outside a glass window during a snowy scene or in some kind of distress looking for help. This one says poverty. Kind of reminds me of like a post-apocalyptic scene, you know? Yeah. Very vivid details though. And it has that sepia kind of color tones going on in the picture itself. Now I have seen this piece before, um, but they're using it for generosity in this one. I've also seen the next one, I think, before. But you'll have to get the deck to see this one. Like I said, I don't want to show every single card. Here is the Eight of Pentacles. This one's usually that one where you're learning a skill. Uh, actively um, hands-on learning, actively doing some kind of apprenticeship or something. And it says practice for its key term. Uh, long hours, learning how to run the universe. <laughs> Has some astronomy and um, tools for guiding or navigating by the stars in her hair. So that's kind of a cool mix. So practice, practice, practice. Learn the skills through practice. Let's see. Here's the Ten of Pentacles. There we go. Oh, goodness. And now we're into the court cards. Interesting. One moment. All right, I'm sorry this is so long. All right, so let's just go through this, all right? Queen of Wands, determination. Looks like they have a astrology symbol on her arm. I could be wrong. Not sure about the other symbolism there. Here is the King of Pentacles. So wait, this is the Queen of Wands. And then they're jumping to the King of Pentacles. Hmm. Loyalty. 
got some horns going on. Knight of Swords. Uh, idealism. I think that's the Gemini symbol. Could be wrong. Queen of Cups. Pisces. And they might be an astrology order. King of Wands, leadership. Very pretty. Knight of Pentacles, servitude. Again, I believe this is probably in... Come on. Come on. Uh, something about the colors is not activating. There we go. Knight of Pentacles, servitude. And again, there's astrology symbol in the center there between her wrists. Here is the Queen of Swords, and the key term is fairness. And the King of Cups, Fascination. I like these kind of like modern clothes on some of them. I think that's Scorpio, isn't it? Okay. Knight of Wands, Desire. that astrology symbol there. Queen of Pentacles, Ambition. And I believe, now that I'm paying attention, there's star constellations and planets on the top there as well, in the top corner there. This Queen of Pentacles, Ambition. There we go. This is King of Swords, Logic, and I believe this is Aquarius. And then whatever planet goes with it up in the corner. So remember, Aquarius is not a water sign. It is the holder of water, which is the sky. Not, or, or an air sign. It is not water itself. So many people tell me, Aquarius is a water sign. No, it is not. Uh, the Knight of Cups, Empathy. Uh, I believe this is Pisces. This would be my card. I am a Pisces. And it's a mermaid. Lovely. And I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be Neptune, if that's the right one. Neptune or Uranus. It's one of those two. Okay, here is the Page of Wands. Venture. I don't see uh, an astrology symbol on these right away. There might be more court cards than there are symbols. Page of Pentacles, Reliability. Gorgeous. Page of Swords, Inspection. Page of Cups, Inventiveness. Another lovely card. Okay, and there is a couple extra cards. There are supposed to be 80 cards in this deck. So this one is called You Are One, and it says Authenticity. And then we have the Paranormal, and it says Curiosity. And that is the full walkthrough on the deck. Again, it has this really cool purple gilding that I just don't know if it's showing up well on the de on the deck. Um, I never know how I feel about the separation of the two parts of the deck, but I can say that this is definitely a meaty deck. Um, it does have those two extra cards, and it's quite large, <laughs> but I can actually still grab it. I don't know how well I'm going to be able to shelf shuffle it. Um, I have not gotten it out of order yet. Literally, I unboxed boxed it as you saw. Let's see. I tend to do a side shuffle. It is a matte finish, so it's not sliding as quickly or as glidey as you might expect. 
but I think yeah I think it's doable I was doing a side to side shuffle like this like this toward each other um, and I think you could easily do that hand over hand one pretty well yep it slides really well and again I have small hands so this I'm gonna have to move cautiously with this deck um, I just do a swirl on the table, but I just have my metal table here, and I don't want it to scuff the surface of the deck. So, yeah, I can already see that it's... Uh. Oh, I banged it a little on the surface, and a little bit of the gelding came off, or did white impression on it. That had nothing to do with the deck. It was the surface I was doing it on. But still lovely. I have to be careful with these. All right, so matte finish, gilded. Be careful on your surfaces. I would do them on like a cloth. Um, the, it is a little bit of, there's some flex, but I would be careful what you shuffle and, you know, hit them on. This is a middle, metal table, so I got a little bit of scuff on the bottom of the cards on a couple of them. So yeah, gorgeous. Again, the book, now that I've shown you the cards, is lovely it has full color illustrations again the green floor like swirly type titles and then the rest in black and um 15 spreads including a game of astrology and his um oh and a little note section for yourself in the very back and yeah i'm really looking forward to learning about the bonus cards has a section on that as well and then I believe back in the front it does have something about the ideas and the theme of the deck let's see yeah it has an introduction about this tarot deck and how to use it right in there should tell you most of what the theme is and all that stuff so gorgeous full color book that I just love that um, it's becoming quite popular now to have colored books and the box itself is just lovely and I do am looking forward to working with this deck um, by J.R. Riviera and the artwork is by Jazz and Becca Griffith and unfortunately I already dinged them a little bit but that's okay I now know better not to do any solid surfaces like metal have a nice cloth under it to protect the gilding uh, and yeah, take your time taking the cards apart just in case it is a matte finish with the gilding. So you want to make sure you don't do any pilling or anything like that on it. So other than that, it really feels great in the hands. So I am looking forward to working with it and I will make sure to have a cloth under it from now on. Um, go out and get it. Have fun and enjoy your oracles and tarot. May you be inspired and blessed by the triple realms of the land, sea, and sky. Blessings and peace out.